Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. Uh, my name is Mike Wilkins. I'm Managing Director in the Infrastructure Finance team at Standard & Poor's. And uh, today we're going to be discussing what a carbon constrained future could mean for oil companies' credit worthiness. And I'm happy to have with me today Simon Redmond, uh, Director and an oil sector specialist in the Corporate Ratings team based in London. Good morning. Hi, Mike. So, first of all, um, can you tell me what do we mean um, by carbon constrained? Sure, well, thanks, Mike. Um, the, the, the real story here is um, the IEA, for example, in its World Energy Outlook 2012, said that two-thirds of proven hydrocarbon reserves um, couldn't be burnable uh, and we still meet the CO2 emission targets that are set out by 2050. So um, that's something that I guess you know mm. we, we need to think about um, and, and that's basically what we mean. So the constraints on CO2 emissions mean that some of the reserves that are on companies' books may not be actually producible. If you right. Right. So I understand that we've developed a stress scenario for our study. What exactly is that scenario? Right. Well, again, we have our base case behind all of our ratings. And what we've done here is to say, let's try and imagine a world where some government policies are in place that reduce uh, oil transport, um, to reduce demand for oil. And um, fundamentally, what we've done is, is assume an oil stress yeah. scenario. So yeah. we assume that demand decreases. And we assume that uh, production, at least in the short run, continues as companies continue to try and maximise profits. And as a result of, you know, if you will, steady supply and decreasing demand, we see pressure on prices. So right. basically the stress is a decreasing price scenario. Right. And what impact does that uh, have on our companies that we've looked at in this particular study? What's been the credit impact of uh, this particular scenario? Right. Well, we've, we've basically said, OK, let's, let's run our oil price deck down to Brent at 65 right. by 2017. And the, the impact, of course, um, is, is hardest and fastest, if you will, on the companies with the highest cost production on an all-in basis. Mm -hmm. So we've really seen the Canadian oil sands producers. Mm -hmm. We use them as a, as a sort of test, if you will, uh, as, a company, as a set of companies that could be most impacted. And within you know, two to three years, we could actually see credit metrics deteriorate to such an extent that we might then look at outlook revisions to negative and actually probably downgrades over that kind of a time horizon. Okay. For bigger, more diversified companies, some of the international oil majors, for example, we, we see a more muted impact, at least in the near term, but clearly, if we have a price deck at 65 as opposed to our current actual long-term price deck of 80, that's going to have implications for even more diversified players um, with a lower cost structure in the longer term. And by longer term, I really just mean looking at sort of three to five years. Right. Um, clearly, we've not tried to roll this on looking at 20, 25 years, although we, we recognise there are bonds that are issued by some of these companies that, that are out there for the longer term. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Simon. Okay, well, that uh, concludes uh, this edition of Credit Matters TV. Thanks, and uh, thank you for next time. Bye-bye.